this very environmentally conscious world, there's a lot of talk of what comes out of a car's exhaust. Now the electric car has admirably answered that. It doesn't have an exhaust. But climate change, if you look at the larger picture, it's got a lot less to do with what's coming out of the car and quite a bit to do with what's going into it. And I'm talking about electricity. How clean is it? How renewable is it? And that's what we are looking at. What is the way forward on this, the clean energy drive, where we drive to renewable energy power plants to know the way forward in this, the Mercedes EQC. Yes, we are doing a long distance road trip in an EV, something many don't think is feasible yet. And to get to our various destinations, there'll be a mix of wide expressways, busy highways, narrow rural roads, and even some twisty hilly sections. But first, a quick chat with Santosh Shire, Vice President Sales and Marketing at Mercedes-Benz India. The plant that we are in right now today, it's 80% powered by renewable energy. And by the end of next year, it will be 100% by this. So we are also looking at all the power sources uh, to be as green as possible. Our perspective, we are encouraging all clean sources, even the, all the charging station tie-ups or whatever we are trying to think of. Uh, our priority is to ensure that these charging stations are coming from renewable sources and the power is coming from renewable sources. We are quite happy that many brands in the luxury space and others will now come in with more products. That should drive consumption more and more. India will also follow. Maybe the infrastructure may not be yet there, uh, but still people will learn, our consumers will learn to live with those challenges and we'll find our own way. And with that encouraging thought, it's time to flag off and hit the road. Our first destination is the Tata Power Hydro Plant in Kapoli, about 75 kilometers away from the Mercedes plant in Chakan. But for most part, that journey would be on the wide and smooth Mumbai-Pune Expressway. Time to open the EQC's taps. So you've heard it from Mercedes themselves. An EV only future is important and inevitable. But can you imagine the amount of electricity needed to charge all those cars? And if that electricity is going to increase the amount of CO2, then isn't the whole purpose of reducing your carbon footprint defeated? Now we've timed the clean energy drive in the midst of the monsoon where everything is clean and green. The skies are clear, there's very, very little pollution. And that's when you tend to appreciate a non-polluting car like the EQC even more. I'm also appreciating the EQC's abilities as a high-speed highway cruiser. It's refined, it's planted and it's comfortable. And with 408 horsepower and an AMG-like 765 Newton meters of torque, Flooring it in the EQC is a real eye-opener. I'm pinned back in my seat as huge distances are swallowed in seconds. And it's made all the more bewildering by the only audible accompaniment, a light whoosh. We soon break off the expressway and onto the old highway and are soon whisked down a verdant path and through the massive gates of the Tata Power Kapoli Hydro Plant. First things first, time to plug in. So I'm going to top up the EQC with completely clean electricity. This electricity is produced by hydro generation. Now, typically hydropower goes into the grid, it gets all mixed up. But over here at the Tata Power plant, the entire plant is run by pure hydropower. And Clean electricity in a clean car, that's the only way to get to zero carbon emissions. Keen to show us around is Tata Power's Chief of Hydro, Prabhakar Kale. He's incredibly well-versed in not just the science, but also the history of hydropower in India. Tata Power decided to harness this power of water for generation of electricity. And that too was more than 100 years ago. In fact, if you look at the national level, all India level, there is a potential of 147,000 megawatts. 
out of which only about 46000 megawatt has been tapped so far so there are you know technical challenges in terms of construction of tunnels construction of dams power house but once you are able to address those challenges then there is a tremendous potential within india itself in hydro because we are also talking about phasing out thermal fossil fuel based generation maybe by 2050 or somewhere around that time most of the thermal plants in india would be phased out the hydro is most reliable most reliable compared to other clean sources of energy once you store water in the reservoir at a height okay then it is up to you to decide when to take that water when to draw that water for generation of electricity that is entirely left to you we are then warped forward from the heritage building to this modern facility and it's hard to fathom that over 70 megawatts comes out of this building to feed power to the homes and offices of Mumbai. And now that we've seen the tech, it's time to go to the source. Back in the EQC, we climb up the mountain via lush gardens that lead to the mighty Valwan Dam. It's here that you get a sense of the true scale of hydroelectric power. And you realize why, even if it's a dry monsoon, there's always enough water in this lake for sufficient power generation. It's also here that my leg of the journey ends as I hand over the wheel to Gavin for the next leg, which will take the EQC on a 185 kilometer drive to Satara district. Well, it feels so good to be back at the wheel once again and that too at the wheel of an EQC because there's something just so refreshing about electric motoring. I don't know what it is. Is it the silence? Is it just the novelty? Is it these lovely displays? But uh, it's just exciting each and every time. I don't know when that excitement will wear off. Maybe it's uh, just a new thing right now and maybe someday we'll get used to it. And that's just what the EQC is, a taste of the future and a not too distant future at that. The brand tells us it's only 2030 before all their cars globally will be electric. That's not far away at all. And though this EQC currently sits at the top end of the EV market here in India, there are so many gaps to be filled. Sure, there are some gaps up top, but there are way more EVs to come below this. And this sort of sets the tone for all of them. It shows us what an EV can be in terms of luxury, in terms of comfort, but most importantly, in terms of all the tech we can get used to. And as the day draws to a close, it truly hits me. Here we are on a long distance road trip in an electric vehicle. It really is possible. As night falls and traffic thins out, I finally get to experience and enjoy the serenity of silent EV cruising. We reach our destination quite late, Amrai Resort, a hotel just off the highway in Satara district which houses the only DC fast charger in the region. It's a simple job of plug in, authenticate with the app and leave it for the night. And we'll pick things up tomorrow morning. Oh, it feels good to start afresh. I am nice and topped up and so is the EQC. Because, well, even though this is a luxury EV with a relatively large battery and a relatively long range, let's face it, range anxiety is still very much a thing, at least now in this early stage of EV adoption, before we get fully used to it. I, for one, am the absolute worst. I mean, I get paranoid when my mobile phone battery drops below 50%. But luckily, the EQC has a lot of data presented to you to make matters easier and alleviate some of that stress. Today, there'll be very little highway driving as we plot a course inland on tight rural roads towards our next destination. The EQC truly does stand out here, but not because luxury SUVs don't roam these parts but simply because no one has seen one so silent. 
It's not long before they appear on the horizon, wind turbines as far as the eye can see. As our route meanders towards them, however, I notice they don't just get closer, but move higher up too. This means we've got both a literal and metaphorical hill to climb, and that's bound to take its toll on the range. Still, as we ascend the rocky path, the EQC is soon dwarfed by the towering turbines of Tata Power's Agaswadi wind farm. And there, at the top, to tell us more about wind generation, are the helpful heads of the facility. Always, uh, the capacity, uh, renewable capacity is growing and there is a huge potential in Maharashtra also and in the whole India. Uh, the potential for a renewable sector is very much uh, a growing side because uh, in solar, uh, you can generate during a daytime. But in wind scenario, you can generate 24 by 7. And it is a very much uh, supportive for a Indian GDP also because these wind sites have already erected at remote places. And because of these wind projects, the local infrastructure throughout the from road, from hospitality, from medical facilities, and each and every, wherever there is a contributor, contribution member is available in rural areas. Uh, earlier days, 15 years back, there were a huge machines, wind turbines, but they are having a capacity of lower side, 350 kilowatt, 500 kilowatt. But size, the WTG site was huge. But now due to technology upgradations, definitely the megawatt capacity of WTG has been increased and the compact size is there. In solar, there are limitations for generation. The wind capacity, you can add more and you can develop your country not for India, but globally. Every country should concentrate on wind because 24 by 7, that power is available for us and for everybody. And as he brought our chat to a close, Mr. Satre practically read my mind with his next question. Do you want to charge the car? And just like that, a line was drawn directly from one of the turbines and plugged straight into the car. With a decent top-up, it was time to make trails for our next destination, and I mean that quite literally. So here's the thing. This wind farm is located quite high up at an elevation, and that means we had to climb quite a way up to reach here. And as you might imagine, from a place that's not very inhabited, uh, the roads that lead up there aren't quite roads at all. So that's been giving us an unexpected opportunity to do a little off the beaten path driving with the EQC. Now, of course, make no mistake, this is no off-road course, but it is some pretty rough stuff that you need to be careful of in any luxury SUV, to be honest. Interestingly, it's handled it quite well because you mustn't underestimate that this car has instantaneous all-wheel drive thanks to its two electric motors uh, on either axle. But there's one thing we have had to be a little wary of and that's the lowered ground clearance. Say compared to a GLC which this car is based on, uh, the battery pack is obviously placed under the car so that lowers the ground clearance a little bit. And if you're not careful on some of these rocks and ruts that stick out, it is all too easy to scrape the belly if you don't put a wheel right. I think what I love the absolute most about windmills is just the sheer scale of them. They're so vast and they are such a sight to behold when you see them on the side of the highway as you drive by. Like the EQC here on this less than desirable road is riding just superbly as you would expect of a Mercedes. But for the EQC there's a bit more of a challenge than the average Merc. You see, because it's an EV, it has a big heavy battery pack and that means it weighs two and a half tons, this car. And it has to ride well despite all that weight, despite riding on steel springs and despite riding on those really classy looking 20 inch wheels. And yet somehow it manages to do it. And that truly is what you call the wonder of engineering. Back on the highway, it's time to make haste to our final destination because the day is drawing to a close and we really want to catch some sun for this one. 
It's an unmistakable sight as soon as we arrive. Even more so than the wind turbines, driving into the heart of a solar farm feels like driving straight into a sci-fi movie scene. Thousands of panels on either side of me stretch seemingly to infinity, light bouncing off their glassy surfaces as the EQC hums across the dirt path between them. We approach the central control room where the team on site is waiting to plug the EQC directly into the bank of panels to charge up. Great time to have a chat with Mahadev Sable, zonal head for solar at Tata Power. Today has certainly been a day of learning for me, but it doesn't stop there because there is just one more lesson I have to learn. And what a classroom this is. Tell me a lot more about it is Mr. Mahadev Sable, who is the zonal head for solar o &M at Tata Power. Mr. Sable, thank you for talking to us. And first and foremost, this is a huge facility and a very impressive one. So can you tell me more about it, please? The area of this PV uh, solar farm or the solar power plant is 250 acres. This plant uh, holds more than 2.30 lakhs of solar PV panels. This solar PV panels uses the photon energy available in atmosphere and in the rays of sunlight. And they convert that energy into usable form of electricity which can be used for any kind of applications like now we are charging right now the electric vehicle directly from the supply taken from the string combiner box which generally combines the energy generated from set of the solar PV panels. Why is solar so popular? Is it the cost? It is the ease of setting up? Uh, what makes solar just the most popular renewable energy source? Solar is the most simplest installation which hardly takes six to eight months even for a capacity like more than 100 200 megawatt and the plants like rooftop it can be installed even one day and directly connected to the grid if you see the cost which has now come down so less that even there are now plants which are coming or selling the energy at two rupees or two rupees 14 paise two rupees 15 paise per unit compared to any other form of energy which is much more expensive than that and surely going forward in future we will surely going to have 100 percent renewable energy for all kind of application usage as we caught some photographs with the last of the day's sun against this incredible backdrop something came over me and i couldn't help but feel a little hopeful for the future wow what an eye-opening educational and electrifying day it's been I've learned so much more than I bargained for. But more than anything else, I've come away confident that our future is secure. I feel relieved that clean energy is here. Clean energy is stronger than ever and clean energy is here to stay. That means that our future can truly be zero carbon emissions. And of course, completing that picture would be driving an EV. And well, it doesn't hurt if that EV has a three-pointed star on its nose now, does it? Thank you so much for watching and remember to like this video, share it with your friends and if you haven't already, subscribe to Autocar India and click the little bell icon. Here's to a cleaner future.